Hey guys, it's Ivan, and today we are back with another minimal setup consisting of our new recently released ground control in a standalone case, along with a synth voice based around the Godspeed VCO with the Ghost as the main processor, Cockpit as a mixer, and two Airstreamer 4 envelopes for shaping and modulating our sounds. The synth voice setup over here is inspired by the iconic Roland SH-101, but goes well beyond what is possible with that synth. The first most obvious difference is having two envelopes over here, we can use one of them for our VCA on the Ghost and another one for the filter cutoff. But of course we are not limited to this and can use one of them as an LFO or an oscillator with one volt proactive tracking to control the delay time for example, in order to create a pitch drifting effect. The processing core of our voice is the Ghost, which we can use for pretty much anything. The onboard pre-VCA over here can be used to shape the amplitude of our signal, the filter for shaping the harmonics, reverb and delay to add space and widen the stereo image of our sound. The compressor at the end of the chain will make sure our sound is well treated, which means that once you have recorded it, there isn't much more work to be done in post-production, letting you have a more productive workflow in the studio. Now that you understand how everything works, let's put this into practice and recreate one of our favorite Boards of Canada melodies from the track called Kiny Industries. As you probably know, Boards of Canada have used Roland SH-101 pretty much on all of their famous tracks, but their style is not so much about the synth, but more about how they process them. And this is actually true about most of the artists. Processing is what makes your sound unique, and that is why we made the Ghost, which gives you many flavors of routing options with clever matrix of interacting parameters. No one will make the same sound as you. Now let's build our voice. The Ghostpit will be our sound source and we'll be using the even odd output that will allow us to crossfade between the saw and square wave. Additionally, we can add the noise and the sub oscillator. So let's patch it from the even odd to the input of the ghost. Next, we need a way to control the dynamics of our signal. And for this, we'll be using the zero to five volt output from the air streamer and we'll patch it to the pre-VCA on the Ghost. To trigger the envelope, we'll be using the ground control track number one. So we'll just patch the gate output to the trig input over here. Let's also connect the pitch output from the track one to the one volt proactive input on the Godspeed. With the pitch connected, we'll make sure that everything is in tune by pressing the A key over here and pressing the tune button. Additionally, we'll patch the bipolar Airstreamer 4 output to control the filter cutoff. And now we can play some notes to hear how this sounds. To get as close as possible to the Boards of Canada sound, we'll also need to add some time warping effect. And to do that, we can use the Airstreamer 4 in the LFO cycle mode and we use that output to modulate the delay time just a tiny bit. Now to nail the Boards of Canada sound even more, we need to add some time warping effects. And to do that, we can use the bipolar output from the second air streamer that is in cycle mode, so it's an LFO, and we'll use it to control the time of the delay on the Ghost. So let's hear the note, and I will go from the extreme effect to really tiny chorus-like sound. This is without the modulation and this is with the time warping. And let's also add the sample rate reduction effect introduced in the newest firmware. To do that we can press the routing button and adjust the resonance. So let's press a note. This is obviously way too extreme. We just want a tiny bit. And let's add some noise from the Godspeed by pressing the tune button and turning the timbre.
Now that the voice is ready, it is time to play and record the main melody from the track Kaini Industries. But as the melody spans more than two octaves, making it slightly more difficult to play it on the ground control in one take, we'll connect this Arturia keyboard over here to the USB input on the ground control and use it as our main keyboard. So let's put it over here and simply plug the USB cable to the host input on the ground control. Apart from being able to use the USB cable over here to connect the keyboard, you can of course use the MIDI output via the adapter to the MIDI input on the ground control over here. As for the MIDI configuration, all we have to do is set the MIDI keyboard output to be on channel number one. This will mean that the keyboard or the notes we play over here will go straight to track number one over here. If you want to send it to track number two, you just set the keyboard to channel number two. And if you wanted to play track three, you have to set the keyboard to be on MIDI track three. But of course, you can configure each track to respond to any MIDI channel that you want. Now with everything connected, we can play and record the notes just like using the ground control keyboard. So let's... <laughs> Let's also add some space to our voice by enabling the reverse reverb over here. So we can play the notes. With the setup completed, let me show you the melody and then we'll record it into the ground control. It goes like this. Now we can record it, and since I don't really have any drum voices to keep track of the tempo, I can activate the metronome by pressing the tempo and C key, like this, and then using the plus sign to turn it on. This will help me a lot to play the melody on time. Just so you can hear the metronome, I can take off my microphone and place it over here. So as you can hear, it's pretty useful. And without further ado, let's start and record our melody. We'll be using the 64 step sequence and so that we don't have to wait for the whole pattern to loop back and we start recording from the start, we can just arm the recording and once I press the first note, the sequencer will start the playback and will start recording. To achieve this, all I have to do is press the tempo record. As you can see, it said wait. So now as soon as I press the first note, it will start recording. Now we can play back the melody from the ground control and start tweaking some of the parameters. As you can see, we have managed to recreate the Boards of Canada vibe pretty well with this microsystem, and it would not be possible without the ghost that was providing all the processing for the voice. And now, as a bonus, I would like to show you another track by Daft Punk called Da Funk, and the main idea with this is using the sample rate reduction and high resonance on the filter to create a vowel-like sound. So let's start tweaking some of the parameters, so I will play the note. 
now we can add sample rate reduction. Maybe even more. And the melody goes like this. The effect is produced by high resonance peak in the filter going into sample rate reduction. I hope today's video was inspiring and you are excited to try your own voices with the ghost at home. Today we also learned how to connect external keyboards to the ground control, making it easier to play more complex melodies that span more than two octaves and can even record velocity if needed. As always, both of the project files will be available in the description. Don't forget to press like and subscribe to not miss our next video. That is all for today, have fun making music and we'll see you next time.